when Cara started, she was fighting for Dark and Ral and his beliefs. And through um, everything that she's learned and the journey that she's gone on, she's decided to use what she's learned to fight for good. She's trying to redeem herself. If and when a new Lord Rao should claim the throne. When I got this role, I was really um, struggling to find myself in this character, you know, because she's so strong. But um, the more that I sit in this character, the more I kind of see a lot of myself in her, speaking without thinking. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, she's a, she's a pleasure to play. Wizard, we've been traveling for weeks. Wouldn't it be faster if you just turned us into birds? How would Leo carry the Sword of Truth in his beak? <laughs> Do you know what kind of bird I'd be? Parrot that doesn't know when to stop talking. I think it's never easy coming into an already established cast as a regular because, um, yeah, you know, like you've got a bunch of people that started it together and they've, you know, got lots of relationships. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what you said? <laughs> it's always about trying to laugh as much as you can and, you know, just bringing fun to set, which I, I think is so important, you know, when you're trying to save the world every day. <laughs> you know, you need a bit of lightness somewhere. Get me as hard as you want. All right, all right, slow. I'm used to doing it to strapping men. The relationship between um, Kaylin and Kara has been quite interesting. I mean, you know, when Kara first shows up, I think um, Kaylin wanted dead and evacuated as, as soon as possible, you know. But it's, you know, the way the writers have gone with it, they've actually um, worked this really beautiful friendship in there, you know, where she, she, she realized I was her ally. You know, I've been watching you for weeks and I can tell you care about him. You can't read a Mord Sith. The confessor in me can't. But the woman can tell you're not telling the truth. She's a wonderful girl and, you know, we, we have a really beautiful friendship. We're in each other's corners constantly, you know, whether we're talking about makeup or magazines or clothes or, you know, what's going on on set or our characters and our love life, you know. She's, um, she's turned into a, a really amazing friend. It's a hard world we live in, Kara. We don't get many chances. If you have feelings for Leo, you should tell him. Three, two, one. It's stretchy leather, um, thank goodness, um, because the original um, leather that, that I had was uh, quite a tough leather, whereas this is quite stretchy, so I've got lots of movement. I have to make sure I drink plenty of water because this, um, this outfit, when the sun is shining, is, is very hot and I can get quite dehydrated. <laughs> lots of books and buckles and um, lace and leather. <laughs> I have a belt which holds my jeans my magic agiles that kill. It's my working outfit that I have on every day and it's part of me, it's part of the character and I think it works very sufficiently. Every day is different, you know, it's um, full of drama and action and horse riding and trying to wield these agiles so that I look cool, you know, with my moves. It's all about looking cool. We often don't get the time to go through the rehearsal process that, you know, on other productions you get the opportunity to do, so everything's just kind of quite fast. That was quite a challenge because Bridget and Craig are fantastic. And my first fight sequence, I think, was with Craig and he's swinging his sword around, you know, and I was thinking, oh, oh dear, <laughs> like, I need to somehow look half as cool as that. Counts. I'm just so lucky that the team behind me is just beautiful. She was up for anything. She didn't flinch in anything. Get in the Mordsith bath naked, no problem. Uh, make out with other women, no problem. Seduce this guy, no problem. She just really jumped into it uh, with a lot of energy. Tebret really has just, like Kara, stepped onto the stage and owned that character.